The sun is considered as the most powerful source of energy around us and it emits the energy in the form of radiation and this radiation can be categorized in the terms of wavelength, frequency, wave number and energy. As we know that the energy can be calculated by the Planck equation. Okay, So in this video we are going to talk about the various kind of spectroscopy. So as the development of science, scientists know that that radiation can be interact with the matter and that study is called spectroscopy that means to say interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter is considered as a spectroscopy okay so first of all to before going to understand the spectroscopy we are going to understand what is spectroscopy and what is electromagnetic spectrum so as earlier i told you that that sun is going to emit the radiation that is electromagnetic radiation and it is a very wide spectrum okay so we are going to categorize this electromagnetic spectrum so first of all we are going to start from the highest energy to the lowest energy as we know that a Planck equation is equal to E is equal to H nu where H is equal to Planck constant and nu is equal to frequency and nu is equal to C by lambda so we can say that E is equal to HC by lambda. Here the lambda is a wavelength and C it is a velocity of light. Now 1 by lambda is considered as a wave number. Okay. So finally the equation of energy become E is equal to HC nu bar. Okay. So continuously we can say that E is equal to H nu is equal to HC by lambda is equal to HC nu bar. Okay, so we can say that the radiation with having a higher energy, having a higher frequency, having a lower wavelength and having a higher value of the wave number. Okay, so this thing is going to helpful to understand the electromagnetic spectrum. So in our case, first of all, we are talking about the cosmic rays and please understand that cosmic rays are not emitted by sun. Okay, so they are intergalactic waves, higher energetic radiation that are coming from the various galaxies to the our galaxy okay uh, sun is not going to emit the cosmic rays okay so now what i'm going to talk cosmic rays having a most highest amount of energy their frequency is high and their wavelength is lower also their wave number is high after the cosmic rays the lower energy waves comes that is a gamma rays after the gamma rays there are the x-ray after the x-ray that is the uv after the uv rays comes to the visible and visible range is visible to us visible radiation is considered to be 400 nanometer to the 800 nanometer and this reason is only visible to us so as you see me and i see you that is comes into only this wavelength region that is a 400 nanometer to the 800 nanometer after this visible range comes that the IR infrared radiation okay and after that infrared there is a microwave region and after the microwave there is a radio waves region so considering that radio waves are the most poor radiation energy okay having a higher amount of the wavelength and lesser amount of energy while the cosmic rays are considered as the most energetic radiation so now we are going to understand the vibrational and rotational spectroscopy okay so before going to understand the spectroscopy now we are aware about what is electromagnetic spectrum so let's clear the definition of spectroscopy it is says that it is a interaction it is a study of the interaction between electromagnetic radiation with matter is considered as a spectroscopy okay so when light is going to interact with the matter there are the various phenomena is going to happen light can absorb it can reflect it it can deflect it okay so there are various phenomena is going to occur okay so one by one we are going to understand but in this case in our case we are going to talk about the absorptional spectroscopy or we can say absorption spectroscopy there are many two types of spectroscopy absorption spectroscopy and emission spectroscopy 
so when absorption is going to take place and when emission is going to take place so when we apply some amount of energy and the molecule or atom goes from ground state to excited state so that absorb the energy and by absorption this transition take place so this is considered as a absorption spectroscopy in another case if the molecule which is already in excited state comes to the ground state and emit the energy and that energy is we are going to study so that is considered as a emission spectroscopy in our case vibrational rotational spectroscopy are considered as a absorption spectroscopy so let's understand why the various scientists are using spectroscopy what are the benefits of spectroscopy so spectroscopy techniques are rapid result obtained in the chart form small sample size is required precise and reliable results the methods are more selective and more sensitive and we can carry out continuous operations so by this way we are using the spectroscopy most in the research as well as in industry when anyone is going to understand the vibrational rotational spectroscopy one most important approximation is there and that is a born open hammer approximation some people found it is very difficult and it is not easy to understand but don't worry it is a very simple and very easy term to understand so first of all let's understand what is the difference between atomic spectroscopy and what is a molecular spectroscopy so in the case of atomic spectroscopy the transition is happen in the terms of the atoms their electron is going through transition but in the case of molecular spectroscopy whole molecule is going for the what transitions but there is a no simple transition just like a, a electrons in the case of atom okay so what kind of transitions happen in the case of molecule so the molecules having the translation motion vibrational motion rotational motion and electronic motions so according to that uh sorry electronic not motion but electronic transition so as per that uh, various kind of motions and energy it's having a various kind of transitions so we can say that the molecules having a rotational transition translation transitions vibrational transitions and electronic transitions so as per this transitions molecules having this various kind of energy so the total energy of any molecule is considered as a e translation e vibrational e rotational and e electronic okay so this is the summation gives what total energy of elect uh, total energy of molecule but as you know that what is a translation energy let me clear you when molecule as a whole is going to transfer or uh, it is going to uh, in a motion that is considered as a what translation when it is going to rotate from its axis from its center of gravity it is considered as a rotational motion when it is going to vibrate that energy associated is called what vibrational energy and the electron of the molecule is going to transfer from one level to another level it is considered as a what electronic transitions among this all energies translation energy is very small and it is not quantized so we are going to ignore it so it is what born of oppenheimer approximation so let me clear you in the born oppenheimer approximation we are going to neglect the translation energy so the total energy of any molecule is considered as a e vibrational e rotational and e electronic so that is called born oppenheimer approximation so in this video i am going to end up to this and in next video we are going to understand the various concept of the vibrational rotational spectroscopy so i am requesting you kindly subscribe this channel like this video and share as much as you can possible okay thank you for watching